Sometimes people reach out to me and say, hey, Steven, you're always talking about customer centricity, but you know, we don't fully agree because we think if you ask your customer what they want, that you're never gonna be truly innovative because customers don't really know what they want. And I have to say, I fully agree with that feedback, um, but I disagree with the statement. I don't think that customer centricity equals asking customers what they want. I think customer centricity means that you understand the needs of your customer and that you proactively add value to their life to take into account the needs that they implicitly have in their lives. And if you can do that, you're customer centric. It is one of the biggest myths that customer centricity means asking people what they want. That is not the case. You know, in 2020, we saw the largest increase in digital usage ever, which is really great because we have new possibilities now like remote work, remote healthcare. We saw a decrease in generational issues with digital, especially related to communication. So many pluses for the increase in usage. But on the other hand, um, we also feel that it's time for a new kind of digital which is more ethical, which is more human. I think today and in the next few years, every single time when we install new technology, powerful technology based on artificial intelligence, for instance, we will have to ask the ethical question. And I think the most important question that we need to ask ourselves is, should we do it? It's not because we can install a certain functionality that we should. I think we need to look to the human impact of it. And I think the world is ready for digital that is more ethical and more human. If you think about the future of customer experience, it's not about technology, it's about creating benefits for customers. And I like to work with three customer benefits. Faster than real time, which means that you anticipate to problems of customers. You solve the problem before they know that there is a problem. The second one is hyper-personalization. It's not about the average customer anymore, it's about the needs of the individual customer, personalized. And the third one is the ultimate convenience. Make sure that working with you is not costing energy or time for your customers because energy and time are their scarce resources. And I believe if you invest in those three benefits, faster and real time, hyper-personalization, the ultimate convenience, that you can create a unique kind of customer interaction for your customers. The crazy thing in customer experience is that some companies make rules for the 5% lousy customers that they may have. The, the truth is that the large majority of your customers are decent people, normal people. 95% of them are people you can talk with. But the truth is that you also have like 5% of your customers that are pain in the ass customers. That's reality. Now the problem is that our mind gives more attention to negativity, which means that after a while, we start to focus so much on the 5% negative people that after a while, we believe that the 5% are average people. That's not true. Your average customer belongs to the 95% group of decent people. So my invitation to all of you is make your customer service rules for the 95% and eliminate those customer service rules that you have for based on the behavior of the 5% pain in the ass customers. If you think about customer experience, uh, please focus on what you can do. Don't hide behind excuses. Uh, sometimes people come to me and they say, hey, Steven, really cool stuff that you talk about, but we can't do it in our industry because we're heavy regulated. And you know, I understand that. And of course you have to stay within those boundaries. But to be honest, I don't like that comment. I think it's an excuse. I always think, imagine that that company would do every single thing that is possible within those boundaries to improve the customer experience. Wow, I mean, these guys would grow like crazy. They would outperform the competition. Just look at all the possibilities that you can do and you can create magic for your customers. So my invitation is focus on what is possible don't hide behind the excuses. Don't let budget be an issue for your customer experience. I hear this so much after a presentation that they say, yes, but Stephen, we're not Amazon. We don't have those budgets, so we cannot be customer centric. To be honest, I don't like that question. I think that actually, to be honest, the most impactful form of customer experience is completely free. It's about the human part, being friendly, having the proactivity to help people. It is free of charge and it has a huge impact. But next to that, 
I mean, we have so many digital tools that are available that are off the shelf, that are almost for free, that you can use to make your customers happy. Think about communication through WhatsApp and Messenger. Think about social media, how you can use LinkedIn and Instagram to inspire people, to help them quickly with questions that they have. All those tools are free of charge and you can increase your customer experience with that. So I'm convinced that you don't need a big budget to get the basics rights of customer experience. So please don't use it as an excuse anymore. The more artificial intelligence we will have in the world, the more filters society will experience. Take Amazon, for instance. They have the potential to create a product filter. If you talk to a device like Alexa and you say, Alexa, I need batteries, the question is what will happen? Will you get Amazon branded batteries or will certain battery brands get through their filter? Or will some of those brands will be stopped by the filter? We don't really know, but they have the power to filter out the exposure that certain brands will have towards customers. Now, the ideal situation is that people say, hey, Alexa, I need Duracell batteries. That's the goal that we need to go for. So I'm convinced that the, the uh, consequence of artificial intelligence for brands is that the investment in branding is more urgent than ever. The more filters you have on society, the more important it is to have a direct relationship with your customers and have a strong brand to make a difference there. The world is facing some really important challenges. We have healthcare, we have climate, we have the rise in inequality. There are many issues that we need to tackle as society. What you see in research is that customers look towards companies to deal with these challenges. The truth is that there is more trust in companies to deal with challenges and to improve society than there is trust in governments. So I think in the future of customer experience, it won't just be about digital convenience. We're moving into a world that, that customers expect more than convenience. It goes beyond convenience. They also want companies to take their responsibility, use their strengths to add value to society.